What is up, all you ICBA type people? This is Tom. I'm bringing you my week two battle against Matt O'Shea and his Montreal Melodics. Now, I'm very excited to bring you guys this match, as I am with every week of the ICBA, despite the time frame which I bring it to you. Um, but I have seen Matt around in the community very often, whether it was amongst the D League or even like the GBA fan server, things like that. And, you know, after speaking with him and working with him in the league, he is someone who I was excited to play. And uh, he is someone in our division, so this should be a very solid matchup. So, with that said, I'm going to go over his team real quick. His full team roster is Darkrai, something that was very much so on my radar with the second overall pick in the draft. He also has Mega Mawile, Mew, Conkledur, Ditto, Crobat, uh, Whimsicott, Curum, Gastrodon, Regirock, and Misharna. Now we see on his side, he does end up bringing Darkrai, Mega Mawile, Mew, Conkledur, and Crobat. Um, but overall, his team is extremely threatening. He does have a, a very solid balance between... Um, you have your bulky things, very hard-hitting offensive things, whether Breaker or just uh, setup mons like Darkrai and Mew uh, or, and Mega Mawile. And then, of course, your hardest hitters being Mega Mawile and Darkrai, things that can set up and you know just overall can do a lot of damage to the team. We do see that he brings a very highly offensive team. I say that because with things with Darkrai... Uh, Mega Maw Wild and even Curum are all which going to hit very hard regardless of you know what I switch into and obviously the coverage moves. Um, we see Mew and Conkled are things that can be bulky but also uh, can apply a lot of offensive pressure to certain walls with their coverage options. And then I think Crobat is a solid fit with things like U-Turn, um, Toxic, Roost, and of course a Defogger, assuming he doesn't want to put Defog on Mew. Now, when I built for this team, Ditto is something that was very... Uh, difficult to build around because obviously you don't want to provide too much setup that can be revenge with ditto but i also kept that in mind because i have faced Ditto very very often in the uh, against geo and the gba and how it functions so i kind of expanded that knowledge to how uh, i built here in addition you know building around dark rye and make them all while especially was difficult because any sort of wall was just gonna get beaten down one way or another by those uh threats and then I kind of wanted to figure out a way that I could beat his team uh, just without a lot of setup, but also with a fair amount of breaking. Now, my team's speed is slower than his Darkrai, and I believe his Crobat, so I had to you know, get a little creative. And by creative, I mean put a scarf on something, so that's kind of what I did. Um, let me look at my team real quick. I am bringing a Scarf Genesect. It will be shiny because it is running Blaze Kick, U-Turn, Iron Head, you know, all that happy bullshit. I'm running a max, well, a fast defensive uh, little Persian because this is fast enough to outspeed a timid max speed Mew. Uh, it is running the like, parting shot, you know, knockoff, things like that. Uh, leftovers, of course. I'm running a Kebia Berry, uh, max defense, Florges with Psychic Moonblast, which protect. Uh, I'm running a defensive Empoleon with like things like Surf and it's my Defogger. Uh, no rocks. Instead, I'm putting rocks on Komo'o, which you'll see in a second. Uh, as well as running a Chapelberry, which um, I'll explain a little bit later. But again, also a defensive Mon. I'm bringing an offensive Life Orb Komo'o, which is very bulky. Not much speed because his speed tees are kind of weird. He He's really fast and it gets really, really slow. So I believe I outpaced just the Conkledur that was trying to outspeed certain, you know, slower threats on my team. But otherwise, his speed tiers are kind of like really really like poor slow or really really fast things like dark ride things like crobat whimsicott curum are up along like the fast side ditto doesn't really count any other things that are really slow things like conkleder things like uh, gastrodon regirock and masharna um then finally i have a substitute uh, ghost dmz miss magius with coverage being energy ball for gastrodon as well as dazzling gleam for just a like it's really solid coverage for Darkrai, even uh, Conkledur. So that's kind of the whole team. You know, I'm very excited with like, how I, I I prepped. I really did expect Ditto, but what he brought also didn't really, you know, shock me. Um, Crobat kind of could have been interchanged things like, I don't know, Ditto or even Gastrodon. But that could have put him in a, in a spot that he could be taken advantage of in terms of my offense. So, all right. So we're going to hop into the match. Sorry for that quick break. Just had to kind of figure out where the hell a video starts. It has just a long intro. But he is end up going to lead off with Crobat. I'm going to lead off with Genesect, like I had said. Uh, this was in the case that he led off with Mew trying to set up his rock, something like that. He led off like Conkledur, even like also, you know, you turn out. Get a little bit of um, advantage on my side. Now, I'm not going to show right off the bat that I am Scarfed. I am going to hard switch out. As I assume he's going to U-turn, it does seem like his most logical play. 
And uh, I'm gonna go right Napoleon, which does put me in kind of a negative position. But regardless, I didn't. This early game was a little bit hard because, like, even though I knew he was going for a U-turn, um, I couldn't quite risk him staying in, going for like Super Fang, a Brave Bird, being aggressive on that first play. Uh, and even so, like, I kind of had to figure out what his sets were in terms of the Conkledur and things like that because. Uh, Without that knowledge, I didn't know how I'd be able to, to deal with it with the the Empoleon and even with Floor just here. He does go for knockoff. Not very effective, but this does kind of put me in a precarious position because if he does have like Poison Jab, it's going to do a lot of damage. But also now Sludge Bomb at plus two will do a lot of damage. Or in, in some cases, knock out Floor just because it's not Spadef. It is defensive this, this game. So um, I believe right here I go for Moonblast just because I, was, I had to see what the Conkholder was, what kind of damage I was going to be able to do. I didn't really expect him to go hard right into a uh, Mecha Maul while. He doesn't really take that Moonblast because it's base Spadef is, um, what's the word? Garbage. So, I am going to switch out into Empoleon as I believe he goes right for play rough. Uh, I kind of expected an Iron Head, even though that really makes sense. Maybe, uh, like, Iron Head, maybe even, I don't know, some sort of coverage move, like Fire Punch even. But he doesn't go for play rough, and the problem that I was coming to, to realize when it was when I was building was despite whatever berry I put on this Empoleon, uh, play rough, you know, T punch, anything like that was just gonna do a lot of damage. So Chopple Berry didn't quite work out here as you see he goes Thunder Punch is gonna knock me out. If I had a Wakan Berry, I would have been able to survive this and then go for another surf and knock him out, assuming he didn't have Sucker Punch, which I'm not really sure that he did, even if he he did, I mean I'd be able to kind of see more of its coverage, um, which Obviously, it would deter out with Magius, but if, if he didn't, I'd be able to uh, knock him out with another Surf or force him to take more Surf damage. So maybe Wakanberry was was the better play there. So I end up going into Kamo. Well, I'm not really in a, in a space to predict here, especially if he does end up staying in, because in a few of my mocks, um, I was seeing that when you know Mega Mawal got low, uh, it was staying in. So I, I just kind of clicked Flamethrower, so I didn't really lose my Kamo for no reason. I could have set up rocks here, but I, again, really in no place to predict with. Um, Mega Maul while as well as a Mew as I'm facing you know with my Kamo which could be and has the potential to be at least one of my biggest breakers with it being Life Orb and him having really no Dragon Resist or Fire Resist once um, Mega Maul while goes down obviously you get my point so I go right out into my Persian as he goes for Flamethrower so I see his coverage moves and I knew <laughs> there was no fucking way I was gonna swap hard into Genesect right there so I'm going to go for knockoff. That's some really nice damage. He is going to roost. The smart play, um, albeit the annoying play, at least for my sort of play style, but he does roost up as I knock off his leftovers. We see this thing is very, very bulky. Whether it's max HP or max defense, um, not really seen right now because I don't really have any attack investment in this Persian. I'm going to go for knockoff to see if what other type of coverage moves he has. Uh, maybe he has something like Toxic. Maybe he has Thunder Wave. Maybe he goes for U-Turn himself. I really don't want to switch anything into a Flamethrower because... Like, yeah, I could have went to Persian, but if he has Taunt, then I can't really wish or protect or anything. Um, I didn't really want to go out and pull Wolf and pull on dead. And I definitely wasn't going out with Genesect or Miss Magus unless this Mew was at, you know, minus one special attack. So I could, you know, invest, live the hit, and not really have to worry uh, about taking massive damage from a Psychic. Uh, you know, so. He's going to go for another Roost, um, which I kind of predicted as I parted shot it out because if I had gone for the knockoff, he could have died with like a crit or something. So it does keep his Mew healthy, which is very smart for the late game. I'll see you a bit later. Uh, I am going to go right for a sub because it does seem like my best play at this very moment. Uh, it allows me to kind of bypass and get some pretty solid damage off on whatever will come in, whether it be like Darkrai. But Conkle definitely made a lot of sense because if he is Assault Vest... This Dazzling Game is going to do like 30 or 40% at the most. We does we do see it does just about that much. Maybe over like 41%. He goes for Ice Punch. Um, good coverage move. I kind of have a knockoff here. So I am, I'm going to stay in. I'm going to hope that he stays in. Even though switching out would probably be a, a good play. I wasn't going to... Whether I click Dazzling Gleam again, I wasn't going to knock him out. So instead I just go right for the Z move. Um, and this is going to... Either it was going to KO the Conkholder. Because Conkholder was in, a, in range of a... Uh, never ending nightmare or it was going to do a lot of damage to whatever came in now He does bring in crowbat and there is a chance to knock out here It's not a very good chance based on the amount of bulk that I assume he has based on his speed tier because Obviously he would I reasonably I think he would expect to just outpace uh, Tornadus with his speed tier and then put the rest in HP which we do see definitely matters here because now I know he, he's not stupid if he roosts with Mew to keep that healthy He's gonna you know roost with this thing to keep this thing healthy so 
I am just going to go right out into uh, Florges, and I do have Psychic on this. I did have Energy Ball in the original prep because um, it was for the Gastrodon. So he is just going to go for Brave Bird. This, I've realized, is like a max attack or at least some attack investment. So this is going to do a, a good chunk of damage, which I think is necessary for him to KO this thing with, uh, with Darkrai, which is what he ends up doing uh, as I knock him out with Psychic. So, you know, it does kind of take out another Mon, but this is kind of when the hill starts to roll a little bit. I say that because every time Darkrai comes in, same way every time that my Genesect comes in, it just something's going to die on his team or my team because you know, Mega Mall Wild's low. He has the opportunity to just go over Sludge Bomb because I had no Kevy Berry. If I had a Kevy Berry, I could live this hit. But because no Kevy Berry, um, Floor just dies. We see his Life Orb right here. So I, I assume he's, you know, Dark Pulse, uh, Sludge Bomb. He needs to have those two moves. And then I think his last move, his last coverage move would be something like Spatial Rend or even, what's it called? Uh, Psychic. Um, last move could be like Nasty Plot or Sub or something along those lines. So. I am just going to U-turn out here, which Mega Mile Wild does end up living. Um, it was There was no point for me to click Iron Head there in case he decided to stay in, because Dark Pulse would just tear this fucking Genesect apart, and I really need to keep up some momentum. So I'm just going to go back in Kamo'o and let this thing claim a kill, which I am going to go right for Flamethrower. Knock out this Mega Mile Wild. Uh, again, not an opportunity to click out rocks, but again, like I really was in the position because anything I kill would just bring in the Dark Rye, um, and he could just play rough there and just knock me right out, which uh, uh, would put me down another Mon. I'd be down three to, I believe, four right now. So, I think it looks Psychic. Um, if he had something like Spatial Rend or Psychic, it would have knocked me out uh, either way. I just had to see what it was that he was, co he was you know, he had in terms of coverage. You know, I could have made that, that scouting and could have went out to Alolan Persian, but I figured that was a little bit more important um, to kind of keep around. Um, just to, I mean, have that knockoff or just have some capability of, of getting your damage off on Conqueror or maybe just removing out off the Assault Fest. So, go back and Jessec. This is not really surprising at this point. I'm just going to go straight for U-Turn as he goes out into Conqueror. This allows me to get in, I believe, my Miss Magius. But right now, I have to start playing a little bit smarter. I have to start making a few predictions to kind of claw myself back into this game because the issue that... I'm starting to run into is that I'm running out of Mons before he is. So I go into Persian here and I'm going to try and draw the Mock Punch or the Drain Punch, which would allow me then to, to get Miss Magius for free, which would allow me to either claim a kill or at least make a, put myself in a position to make a prediction that I could uh, ensure that I could maybe claim a kill before he claims another one of mine. So I'm going to go for Dazzling Gleam and uh, hopefully this KOs. I believe he was in range. He is, and I end up knocking out the Conqueror. Uh, good thing I did get that, that previous damage off with the uh, the U-turn with Genesect and, of course, the Dazzle Gleam the first time around um, when I obviously you know, had Miss, Miss Mages behind the sub. So I'm going to hard swap out because this is probably my, oh, my only hope of knocking out Mew or at least weakening it so that Genesect can knock it out. He does go for Dark Pulse, which he really has no reason to predict at this point. Genesect is just, or, sorry, Dark Rise is just going to come in and claim kills every single time it touches the field. Uh, resist the hit, knocks out a little Persian because it has uh, garbage spadef. So right here... I have the opportunity to go for, for a U-turn, but there is no reason for him to stay in. Uh, he does have Curum, which is completely healthy in the back. If he was to go into Curum now, as I go for a U-turn, I'd go into um, my Miss Mages, which wouldn't be able to knock out this Curum at any sort of range, especially without rocks up, which was kind of a downfall. In this match, uh, not being able to get rocks up reasonably was really difficult. So instead, I kind of make the big boy play. I just click Iron Head because I knew he was going to switch out. And even if he went into Mew, uh, it's still really solid damage that even he, he didn't really have the opportunity to kind of predict around. So go for Iron Head. I do knock out the Kyurem uh, with a you know 2 KO. Was kind of nice to just kind of bong that thing to death. So he goes into Mew. He knows he could live another Iron Head, especially an Iron Head because it's only about 40 to 50 percent. It's 2 KO, but he's not going to bring that in that thing in to take. Uh, 40 to 50 percent on a two a KO. So he just goes up for a flamethrower. As I am, I believe I make another prediction here because I kind of figure he can switch right into Dark Rye and avoid a Shadow Ball. So instead, I'm gonna click Dazzling Gleam. Uh, again, I'm trying to make the plays that keep me into this game or at least put me in a winning position because I absolutely need to. Uh, earlier in the game, it was a little bit harder to do so because just a lot of the mods I brought maybe weren't the perfectly correct sets and uh, I had kind of to make do with what I had so he goes on a dark pulse is gonna knock me out but just because I didn't knock him out with that doesn't gleam uh, if, he, if I had rocks up I knocked it out there's been a double down uh, or I would have knocked him out earlier with uh, you know any sort of move or just you know 
Desmond Gleam in general. So definitely not having rocks up is what you know killed me this match. So I go for U-turn. Uh, if I had X Scissor, you know this, I, I probably could have had a, a better shot here. So I do knock out this Dark Rye as it after I claimed four kills. Uh, you know on my team, which, ooh, that's rough. I go for U-turn here. He said it was a chance for me to knock this out. Uh, it's only if he wasn't, you know, a lot of HP, a lot of defense. I don't knock it out, you know, and he doesn't make, knock me out with Flamethrower. So I do lose 1-0. A very, very close match against Matt. Um, and, you know, hats off to you, dude. Your team is shockingly annoying, but very well built. And, you know, I applaud you. Good match. Hopefully I get to see you again in the playoffs, or you don't make playoffs, so I never have to face you again. Either works. But, you know, it was very enjoyable playing against you, uh, but I will get my revenge next time around. So, hope you guys all enjoyed. I'm going to try and put this up on Monday so I can put my match against Aaron, who we play in week three on Tuesday, just so I can kind of catch up and not have to play this whole catch-up game where I'm uploading a match a week later than they're supposed to go up. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think of the battle down below, and I will talk to you guys soon. Later.